my tea friends welcome hi my name is Jade and this is Jaded Raven Witchery where we discuss all witchy uh, weird and wonderful things today I want to talk about our bare bones basics of divination and before I even get into divination at all there's a few things I really want to say about it the thing about divination that is really super important is that it's not foolproof it's not a hundred percent you will see every single tarot reader whether they're on youtube or you go to them every single one of them has a disclaimer including myself on my other channel that clearly states that you know we cannot guarantee that this would be the outcome on and on and on etc etc and this is because you know divination is not a hundred percent it can be tricksy it can be uh complicated it can teach you lessons in weird and unique and complicated ways and that's what's so interesting about it because there definitely is something um, real there's something here going on because if you know anything about statistics or mathematics like working with several decks and getting the same card out of deck after deck after deck I mean the odds of that are astronomical and for tarot readers to do it on a regular basis in readings is I mean come on so you have to kind of see that there is something going on here at the same time it's not 100 percent another thing i'm you know do do your research psychic abilities intuitive abilities and empathic abilities okay if you know anything at all if you've done any amount of research you will know that these are abilities that anybody can grow and use nobody is any more special than anybody else everybody every single person has this ability what needs to happen is you need to it takes time and effort and it takes time to meditate it takes time chakra cleansings and alignings that you can do and, and aura purifications and strengthenings and that's why in my bare bones basics my all I talk about is literally visualizations and getting into a meditative state and clearing and cleansing your energy because that's that's the first things that are needed you know centering and grounding your energy as well some books that I highly suggest Dennings and Phillips have a great series of books all together on ceremonial magic magic in general they have a practical guide to psychic powers to awaken your sixth sense the practical the practical guide to astral projection the out-of-body experience and the practical guide to psychic self-defense strengthening your aura these I all highly recommend some other books I do recommend and I will put all of these in the description box below um, a witch's travel guide to the astral realm by DJ Conway is also a great book anything on the astral realm or astral plane and this empower empath by Judy Dyer is also um, a good book now even just doing basic research you will find that there's a whole list of these clear senses right clear senses are your astral senses so the clear senses and I have some notes here just so I am uh, and there is some disagreement on this some um, institutions claim there are only four however I am going to go over this little list here with uh, clairvoyance is clear seeing a uh, very visual receiving pictures in your mind the dreams uh, mental images um, and images can be like metaphorical you could, it could be symbolic it can be actual then we have clear audience which is uh, clear hearing the ability to hear voices songs uh, messages so then we have clear cognizance which is a sudden knowing of something it also um i've seen a lot of people with this they just have really good like instincts so then we also have clear intellect which is clear thinking almost like your thoughts are coming from some type of higher form of consciousness like epiphanies clear intellect and clear cognizance are similar in, in ways then we have clear empathy the ability to clearly feel the emotions of others and then there's clear sentience which is like clear physical feeling of things you can feel uh, pain or uh, their stomach ache literally feeling their their pain from a, an injury or something um, whereas empathy is more um, the emotion the emotional feeling so we have clear tangency which is clear touching uh, clear salience which is clear smelling and clear gustance which is clear tasting now as you meditate and do more visualizations and continue these practices and you may already have had moments of uh, clear knowing or clear empathy you know where you've seen something heard something just kind of new so you'll see that as you practice certain exercises and, and do the meditations do the visualizations you'll see that these things do develop 
faster and can develop uh, deeper and to be more, you know, more useful. There's a lot of misinformation, I feel, that is perpetuated and spread about things like this, um, such as only, you know, certain chosen ones are born psychic and they have a gift and everybody else, you know, just doesn't. And, and that's just not the case at all. There are people who I'm sure have the ability as children, and I do believe that all children are much more open um, to this type of thing. And it might just gradually move with them into adulthood. And maybe they do actually think that nobody else has the ability. You know, if that was how I grew up and most people I knew weren't, I would probably assume that as well. But there's been lots of research done. Um, as you develop these abilities more and more and practice things more, things will get better, clearer, easier to understand, and you might start to develop more of these. Now, generally what will happen is some will, you know, you'll have uh, several that are really, really strong while others are non-existent or uh, back and forth a little bit. And so I say this because, you know, I just want you guys to know the language and to know what you're experiencing as you do these things. And also um, there's, you know, how do I want to say this? It's a responsibility, you know, um, to yourself, to others, to be honest, to not spread misinformation, to not over-exaggerate, to make yourself sound more competent, more trustworthy. That's not necessary at all. I think it's uh, very important to be honest um, with people because they will trust you more. Practice, 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 practice. Keep a journal of whatever divination form you are doing. You know, just pull like one rune a day and, uh, or, you know, one tarot card a day or three rune or card spreads. Um, maybe you can just start with simply yes or no questions with a pendulum, whatever you're comfortable with. But make sure you're, you're keeping a journal for yourself, your daily, because you'll start to see where it aligns, where it doesn't, especially with like card meanings, rune meanings, things like that. Things that come out as you journal, you'll see what that meant or what you were supposed to see or know, what the message was. It can play out very, very interestingly. And that's a really good way to learn the meanings of tarot cards and things and how they play out in real life and real everyday situations. Some other tips I have, you know, practice for yourself, practice for others. Don't charge people money when you're practicing, you know, do it for fun, your friends, your family. But overall, what happens is you start to develop these senses. And the reason, I, you know, from this is from my, you know, perspective, my opinion and my experience. I have had, I've always had moments of clear cognizance, even as a child, this just knowing certain things um, and not really understanding how or where that, but, uh, that comes from. But I have no control whatsoever of what I clearly know and what I don't. So for me to say and list like, oh, well, I am clear cognizant, that would be kind of a stretch. You know what I mean? I, I really feel like your clear ability should be developed enough that they're pretty regular for you to start saying, okay, this one, this one's pretty developed because some are going to develop in you, some may not, you know, and I've seen people claim that they're psychic, that they're an intuitive empath, that they're this and they're that, they're every one of the clear abilities listed. And it, that could be, that could very well be, you know, I'm not the judge of anyone else's life. I just want to educate people so they know what to expect, so they can be honest with themselves, <laughs> honest with other people. Um, yeah, there's, you, you don't need, and I believe that it's because of like perpetuated misinformation that you have to be special or otherworldly or have something you're born with or passed down through your family. Yes, it can be stronger and, you know, come easier to those people, or maybe they've always been blessed with that, but that doesn't mean that the rest of us can't find our way to developing these senses much more, okay? It's totally okay to admit when you don't know something. And in my experience, sometimes the cards will hide things from you, mask things from you. You know, everyone has their own experience. They're gonna have their own way and you're gonna get to develop that by practicing and meditating, visualizing, doing all of the things. And by getting other, picking up other books and things that will give you other um, practices, other meditations, other exercises to strengthen these as well. Cause I wish I had known these things much sooner. I was also very, very misinformed. I just wanna help. And the best way I can do that is just by sharing my own experiences and my own observations. And I just want people who are learning this to just be more honest, be more open. 
And so I'm not going to go into every single form of divination. I am just going to cover the, the main, most popular forms um, that I think would be most useful for, for beginners. Astrology is a huge, huge part of, you don't need to know astrology to read tarot, but it does help. It does play into tarot and it is important. It can help you quite a bit, you know, because with tarot and astrology combined, you can get a much bigger picture for yourself and your own energies, planetary shifts that everyone's going through. So it, it is very important to also slowly but surely learn astrology as you go. That's another tip I have, but you don't need to be an astrology master to start reading with tarot or using different divination methods, okay? The main ways of divination, um, so we have astrology. So pendulums are one form of divination. You can get them in many different shapes and sizes. So here are some quick, more close-up examples of pendulums. This one is labradorite and orgone like with the orgone pyramids and it does have a little crystal in it with a little spot like a copper coil and it's on like a really pretty antique looking chain that actually does have like a little clip a clasp so it can be attached on to other pendulums so i love that and this actually I got this as part of a set. It came with a little um, Oregon pyramid full of labradorite and little crystals and things as well. I'll put that in the description box below because this exact one you guys can get and that's a lot of fun. Very, very pretty. Now here is another one. And as I was saying, every single item has an energetic signature, okay? Every item, every energy, so it's important to pick ones, you know, based on, you know, visual appeal. If you can hold them, touch them, see if you feel some type of connection to it or some type of energy from it. Here is one. I believe it is angelite. I think they said it was moonstone, but I think this is either celestite or angelite just based on the coloring. Um, but I'm not an expert. This one comes on a very nice silver cord with a little ring this is from a uh, vendor at a local craft fair i was able to get so i like this one quite a bit as well and here's a third option just to show you all the different varieties and different types this one is actually a clear quartz crystal and it is on a very pretty silver chain that has a beautiful little raven on it a little celtic knot raven and on the back it says, speak your truth. This one is actually out of a witch's moon box, I believe. Um, very, very beautiful. Witchy subscription boxes are a great way to, you know, just kind of build on to your supplies over time. And you never know what you're going to get, but it's always kind of exactly what you need. And that's a lot of fun. So yes, I love all three of these. Now, pendulums, as I was saying before, again, have energetic signatures. And again, they can be kind of Trixie, kind of, I do believe that our own energies and our own auras can influence the pendulum and therefore they may not be as accurate, but I believe as with anything, if you work with them and you, you get into the right trance state and build a relationship, a connection with the pendulum, you can uh, get uh, relatively accurate results, okay, relatively accurate. As with anything, you can't trust it 100%. And again, it goes with the more you practice, the more you spend time with these items. And I, I also suggest having several. They might be good for different, um, depending on what divination you're doing, or you might find that you just connect with some more than others. Here is, um, this also came from the Witch's Moon Box. This is a beautiful, let me see if I can. So here, you can see it much better against some white paper. This is a little pendulum plate with yes, no, maybe, unknown, all different answers. So, again, this came from the Witch's Moon with this adorable pendulum. I, this will work with any of my pendulums. As with any tool, the more you work with it and practice with it, the better it can be and the more accurate results you can get. So, pendulums are a lot of fun and a real basic uh, way to get into divination very, very simple for yes or no answers. Again, 
trusting your intuition, trusting what you feel energetically connected with, and making sure you do the time, meditate, ground, center, connect to your higher self, clearing your energies, getting into a good trance-like state can also help so that your intent and energies aren't fixated too much on what answer you want to receive rather than the answer you should be receiving, okay? So pendulums are one method of divination. Dowsing rods, these are my dowsing rods. They are copper. Sorry, they tend to go crazy if I get them out in this room at all because I do so much uh, energy work in here. And, you know, I'm not doing that. They do this all on their own. It's really, really interesting. The only way I can describe it is it feels like I suddenly have antenna and that they're like seeking out and uh, whatever I'm looking for. So this is my dowsing rod set. It does say Spirit Hunter on it, which I think is super awesome. I will put a link in the description box where you can get these on Amazon. So I do love the big carrying case. And then here they are, they are copper. They are able to freely spin. And all you have to do is kind of gently hold them and let them do their thing. It's really interesting. You'll feel the energetic pull of these uh, right away. It, again, I, the only way I can describe it, it's like having antennas that have suddenly sprouted out of you <laughs> are like detecting things. So there you have dowsing rods. So now the way you use items like dowsing rods and pendulums is you meditate on the question, right? And visualization can help with that as well. Whatever you're looking for with the dowsing rods, you're picturing that as clearly as you can, right? With the clairvoyance, if you can uh, imagine a scene, like if you're looking for water, you would want to imagine water and what water sounds like, it feels like, and smells like. And these will work to find water. People have been dowsing for uh, millennia. Runes are another amazing system of divination. So here we have runes. I want to make sure I'm giving you guys close-ups of everything. And again, you can have several sets of runes. They can be made of wood, bone, stone, so many different options. So here is a simple wooden set. Simple on the wood. They're nice, light. They're simply amazing. I love this little wood set. Wooden is a great first set. You can purchase them. You can also buy really simple um, little wood shapes that you can wood burn them on or carve them on. And again, I'll put some of those cool little wood things I found on Amazon in the description box below because they're really inexpensive. All right, so this is my jade set of runes. I bought them because I love jade. It is my namesake stone, as I have said. So here is this beautiful little set. Let me make sure you guys can see. Ooh, see the detailing? They're etched in gold on the green jade and I love that. I think that is really awesome. They're just simple little squares and a nice little set. And again, I believe you can get this on Amazon. You can get them in a bunch of different types of stones. You can get uh, jade, I know you can get them in quartz, um, all, all different types. So if there is a certain type of stone that you are drawn to or just love, that is a great option. And it is always a good idea to make your own set of runes, whether you wood burn a set in wood or paint a set of stone ones or etch them or whatever it is. Um, by focusing on either one rune a day, or you can also meditate on each rune for three days or nine days, it is actually more uh, traditional. I have painted all of them on these different. Now they are not all the exact same size and all the exact same shape, and I think that's why this set is a little bit more fun than these standard sets. These are all stones I have found or people significant to me have found. And let me just show you a few here. And if you do actually take the time to meditate on each rune and just focus on doing one rune a day or one rune every however many days you decide, you really will get a much better grasp of the runes uh, learning them that way. So that is something to consider as well. 
So those are rune examples. Scrying is another important uh, form of divination. You can scry into regular mirrors, you can scry into black mirrors, you can scry into uh, black bowls of water or cauldrons full of water, you can scry into fire, into smoke, you can scry into just about anything. So scrying is kind of its own practice. Once you can learn to scry, and practice with your scrying, you can scry into multiple things. We have obsidian here, and again, this is actually from the witch's moon. This is an obsidian, a real piece of obsidian, and a little scrying mirror here. We also have a beautiful little um, selenite crystal, so you can scry into multiple stones and crystals, black mirrors, and this is one that I have made. And if you want to see how I made a bunch of black scrying mirrors, check my video on how to make black scrying mirrors. I will try to link that below as well. Um, this is smoky quartz, a huge chunk of it. You can also scry into cauldrons full of water because they're, you know, black. Anything black and kind of limitless to gaze into is a good start. Um, and then you can move on to different stones. You can scry into mirrors, water. You can even scry into the flames of candles, fire, any anything. And some great scrying tools are these tatvas. There is one in each different shape and color for each different element. And one for, of course, spirit. And uh, you can scry into these as well. And if you want to know how I made these or a little bit more about them, check my video on making and using tatvas. So yeah, you can scry into multiple different items and objects. It's more a way of, of divination. And, and once you kind of uh, understand how to get into, again, a trance-like state and make this work for you, you're going to be able to uh, expand those skills and scry into more and more things, okay? It will become easier and easier. And one of the ways you could do this is, you know, we could have... A black mirror the room would be very very dimly lit and then just one candle on either side here to have some type of side lighting some people also choose to uh, burn incense and scry into the incense through the mirror that can work as well again you can be creative with this and try different ways different methods so that is scrying tea leaf reading is obviously when you tea with the leaves and then there are leaves left in the cup after you meditate and sip the tea. Again, you would want to be meditating and focusing on what you're trying to find out, what you're trying to divine, divination, right? It's this kind of uh, conversation with divine source or spirits or however you want to see it. There are methods for reading the tea leaves as they are stuck in the bottom of the cup. For this, the leaves, they have to be, you know, kind of out just in the tea, not separated in a typical little tea leaf um, diffuser. So, um, yeah, that could be, I don't know, kind of messy and not unpleasant if you don't like tea leaves. And then there are tarot cards. And tarot cards are a lot of fun. Let's talk about cartomancy, which is being able to read with playing cards. Um, but that also translates in tarot, as well as different oracle decks and other types of decks. Lenormand is one that has its own little meanings and I do believe they correspond to regular playing cards as well. They will have correspondences on each one of these and these are Kipper cards which are a little bit different and then there are things like Sibylla decks which are little decks like this and these are little decks. Every There have been many many card deck systems of divination that have come out over the centuries. So here are just some basic examples. Tarot is great to learn and this is just a traditional rider weight style um, tarot deck. All right this is probably one most people are familiar with. And again here is just another basic one with a similar back. Rider weight symbolism. And these are great to learn. We also have the Thoth Tarot, 
which is by Alistair Crowley. Um, this is the big one. They do have a smaller edition as well if these are too big. Um, but again, these have their own kind of symbolism and meanings. And this is a great deck as well to work with as far as basic um, tarot decks and starting decks. It's also a great idea if you're unfamiliar, like Lenormand and Kipper decks. They are pretty pretty straightforward as far as the meanings and can be picked up pretty quickly and you can do separate spreads with just Lenormand and or Kipper cards and you can also use them to clarify. See they're all just different types and that's a lot of fun. There's so many different types of decks as well. I will have links for all these because this is a traditional Lenormand, traditional Kipper, these are very traditional tarot decks in the description box below. But do know that there are, if you are brand new and you really want to learn, they do have tarot with keywords. This is by Intuit. And I've reviewed their decks. They're amazing, beautiful decks. And they have keywords for both in the upright as well as reversals on these. So that way, no matter what comes out, you've got a little bit of guidance as you're learning. And these are even good for people who do know the tarot quite well. They're just another helpful option. They also have um, a Lenormand deck as well that I use quite frequently. And it's not just Lenormand, it's animal medicine, it's, it's multiple things as well. So that's a lot of fun. So yeah, you can find them on the Intuit website. So these are all different options for that you can use for divination or build on to divination. And this is what people mean when they, they do tarot or cardomancy. Um, we also have oracle cards and they can be a lot of fun. These are two I highly recommend. The Energy Oracle deck by Sandra Ann Taylor and the Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed These are great basic kind of ask anything oracle decks. Very, very useful. A lot of interesting imagery for intuitive um, readings and trying to, to get a grasp on that as well as just amazing cards in general for readings and in intuition. They're just great um, just for any type of questions. So these I all highly recommend and again these uh, all these basic basic decks will be in the description box below with Amazon links if you do want to check some of them out as well as the Intuit website. Now one of the important things is again to pick decks that you feel a connection to. Every deck has its own energetic signature and um, some are you're really going to connect with while others you may have to work with it and, and build up a relationship with the, de with the deck and some you may just never connect to. You may try and try and just you know and that's okay. The decks that you do vibe with well and that do work good for you um, you know those are going to be the ones that you use time and time again and generally good standard basic rider weight decks. You can never go wrong with those and from there it, it's easy to um, deduce the meanings in other decks and into it other meanings by the deck artwork and um, you also don't have to learn the definitions of any of the cards. Technically you could go through the deck and kind of decide this means this, that means that to me when I see it and then you can read that way as well. That is another method but it's always good to learn the standardized meanings so that if you are doing a reading for somebody, they're like, well, what do you mean Three of Swords is happiness and joy? It's normally sorrow and, you know, pain. So <laughs> it is good to know the traditional meanings as well. And it can kind of help you build um, a relationship with the decks and, and a, a relationship with tarot and card meanings in a way that will be meaningful and you can build on that knowledge. Another important thing to do is to keep uh, tarot journals or any little notebooks at all that you can. They can be very, very simple. Simple little mead dollar five star, you know, these little composition bar books. These work great just to keep track of daily or weekly one or three card draws and how this plays out for you. This is how you can interpret some of the meanings of the cards and all the different ways they can come into play in like day to day living. Um, because you'll be a much better reader and you'll get much more realistic readings that way. 
So I do highly suggest keeping a tarot journal, keeping a dream journal as well it can be very prosperous for people working with their intuition and getting into this type of practice. As well as, again, the centering, grounding, meditation, connecting with your higher self, getting into this empty, quiet mind space where the messages can come and being sure to kind of get yourself in that, that state and focus on what you're asking. And yeah, you can pull cards from there and yeah, make sure you're taking your notes. This is a great way to start learning and start building on your, your intuitive knowledge. And another great thing is that most decks come with useful books and guides, um, especially if you pick up you know, different box sets. Here is, for example, the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. You get a nice little box set like this, and there is a beautiful guidebook that usually will have lots of information and ideas, usually for different spreads. That's another really good thing you can do as a reader, here we go, is learn some different spreads. Basic one card pulls are very easy, three card pulls as well, you can build from there, and then eventually you can learn some more intricate spreads. Uh, the Celtic Cross is very popular, and you can learn any number of spreads from these different guidebooks and build on to your knowledge that way. And you may find some that work really well for you. And as you build a relationship and get better and better, eventually you won't necessarily need a spread at all, depending on the situation and what you're asking. You can sometimes just get messages and intuitive wisdom without a spread at all. So that can be a lot of fun as well. But again, you need to have some basic prior knowledge or not. I mean, hey, some people are just that intuitive and can kind of do it right away. Others need time and practice. It's different for everybody, but again, everybody can do this. You don't have to do anything big and elaborate. You can simply meditate for a few minutes, ground and center yourself, light a few candles, get some incense burning, set the atmosphere. I also do um, recommend using singing bowls or bells to clear the air, clear the resonance of the air, because when you think about it, you know, they do reverberate throughout the space and kind of clear any negative energy, as well as, you know, burning sage and cleansing and clearing energy. So I think that was about it. That's about my bare bones basics on divination. That's kind of um, the main things that I think it's important that everybody knows about divination, that it is something magical. It is something interesting and really cool and unique and special. But at the same time, it can be a little tricksy. It can be a little mysterious, a little hard to get a hold of all of the time. And so there are no guarantees. Yeah, just keep those things in mind. Make sure you are, you know, doing simple meditations, simple visualizations. This was just kind of an overview. You don't need to do anything uh, fancy or special. There's a lot of different methods that you can use. And um, yeah, you don't have to take forever to, to learn about it, but I do think it's important to continue to learn, learn multiple methods, practice multiple methods. And of course, you know, definitely learn about astrology, learn about the signs, the planets, their movements, because it does affect all of us and it does um, play a part so just take your time use your own intuition as well to kind of feel things out and maybe nobody can give you better clarity than yourself so, all right so that was the bare bones basics of divination so i hope this video was helpful in some way as always please like share comment and subscribe for more and i hope to see you guys back next time all right much love to you all bye